Hello, welcome to Whiskey Wednesday. Another Wednesday, another whiskey review with me, Joe. So first things you'll notice, guys, is I'm in a new location. I apologise if this is a little echoey. Um, I've just moved into a brand new flat, um, so I'm trying to find the best location to film in the flat, um, or another permanent location where I might film in the future. Um, so bear with me while we get used to this new location. I was going to be filming in the kind of in the lounge slash, slash kitchen area, but you can kind of hear a constant buzz from the fridge, and I didn't really want that constant buzz in my videos. So apologies for maybe the echo or the fact that I'm standing up. Anyway, thanks to all my new subscribers over the week. Thanks to all my new comments. Um, this video is actually not a whiskey review, but it's a, a how-to guide. Um, suggested by one of my subscribers and commenters, Monkey Pilot. I hope I'm pronouncing your username right. So what I'm doing today is a how to drink whiskey and how to come up with and think of tasting notes. So it's a little kind of guide, a little um, kind of advice for any newcomers or anyone that's into whiskey that's looking to go a little bit more in depth. So. First things first, with tasting whiskey, the first thing you want is a glass. Obviously, how else are you going to drink? I wouldn't drink. I wouldn't recommend drinking whiskey from the bottle. It's 40% at least, so it's going to, you know, knock your socks off. So glass-wise, there is a variety of glasses available. Now, the one I would recommend the most um, is probably the Glen Cairn glass. Now, you will have seen this before, or I hope you will have seen this before. These are the kind of industry standard whiskey tasting glasses, um, shaped so that the whiskey sits at the bottom there and the kind of um, the shape of the glass concentrates all the aromas in the top so when you stick your nose in all those aromas are kind of concentrated there so that's the Glencairn glass um, they're available online they're available for most good whiskey shops um, they're about five pound for a glass um, Glencairn crystal they're pretty sturdy um, they're pretty strong um, so yeah Glencairn glass um, you can also go with the um, Copita glass, which is a, based on a very, very similar design. Um, these are used for all sorts of spirit tastings as well. Again, they've got that um, that kind of rim where it goes kind of slightly inwards, concentrates all those aromas. The only difference is it's got a stem. It's basically the same shape, as you can see, but this one's got a stem. And the reason why some people like the stem is because you can hold it like that if you want to. You can also warm the whiskey as well, if you want it at room temperature, you can put your hand on the top a little bit easier as well to kind of lock those aromas in. So those again, they, these are available for most good retailers, um, online stores and everything like that, they're usually about a fiver as well. So those are the kind of two most traditional um, glasses, anything that shape. Um, you can also use champagne flutes, wine glasses, as long as it's got a tapered, tapered, that's the word I was looking for, tapered, um, you know, partition. I can't think of my words today. Um, or you have different new glasses that are coming to the market. Uh, this is the Neat glass um, that I've reviewed previously. So there's a lot of new whiskey glasses coming to the market. So this is designed specifically so it throws off the alcohol aromas. So when you put your nose in, you've got a sweet spot for nose in the whiskey. So all you can smell is the whiskey aromas rather than the alcohol aromas. So yeah, Neat glasses there, about nine pound. Um, Again, I recommend these, they're really good, they're being used more and more competitions. So yeah, highly recommended. Or, you know, if you want to just drink your whiskey rather than kind of tasting it, I mean rather than nosing it, you can just use a tumbler. I've got this full of water for a very good reason. Uh, tumblers are fine for drinking, but if you want to nose and get the most out of the nose, I would use one of the other glasses. So, second thing to tasting whiskey, you need a whiskey. Uh, this is the Ben 17 year old solstice, I'll just pour a drum of this out, this isn't going to be a full review of this whiskey, uh, I will do that on another video, um, just wanted to show you, you know, I'm actually going to drink some whiskey. So first things first, this bottle's already open, um, open the bottle, pour it into a glass, I'm going to use the, glen the copper, pour a little dram in, you want to get enough to be able to have a good taste. I usually find that's enough, so that's probably just under a single, just under 25 mil. Put the cork back on, always good, just in case flies get in or you know whatever slips in, bits of biscuit or you know whatever you're eating, I don't know. Anyway, so before you even start 
drinking or start smelling. The first thing I do is I look at the bottle and the box, okay? So you look out for a couple of things. A, you look out for the distillery. In this case, it's Ben Rick. Um, look out for maybe an age statement. In this case, 17 years old, okay? Then look out for other wordings. So look out for maybe cask type, or maybe if it's peated, or whether it's lightly peated. Um, look out for the percentage. So on this, you can see straight away, it says heavily peated. Uh, it also says port finish as well. So you know that's been matured and finished in port barrels. Uh, at the bottom right, usually it is 50% ABV. So it's a stronger um, alcoholic whiskey. Uh, what else have we got on here? It also says very clearly on the box. Um, can't see it on the bottom. Non-chill filtered and natural colour. Again, I've mentioned these plenty of times in my other videos. Um, that just tells you that all the natural oils and fats are in this whiskey, uh, it hasn't had any colouring added to it. So that's the first thing I do before I even look at the whiskey itself. Once it's in the glass, have a look. Okay, look at the colour, so that's a kind of a, a slight kind of copper colour. It's got a slight kind of reddish hint, a reddish hue. And then what a lot of people struggle on, and what the reason I'm doing this video is nosing, okay? So, to quote a very well-known whiskey maker, master blender, um, Richard Patterson, the master blender at Dalmore, he says, take your time and say hello to your whiskey. So, bring it up to your nose, but don't just do it once, do it a couple of times. So he goes, hello, how are you? Quite well. That kind of thing. So, really, really take your time. Don't just rush in. Half of the pleasure is the smell of the whiskey, and the certain whiskies that you'll smell that are better than the actual taste. Okay, so when nosing and tasting whiskey, the tasting notes you're picking out are completely, completely personal to you. There are no right or wrong, okay? So don't let anyone tell you you should be tasting this or you should be tasting this, because it is completely personal, and it's what you relate it to in your life. However, having said that, um, if you know it's peated, or if you know it's been finished in a particular cask, okay, there are certain smells that you might expect to smell. Okay, so you've seen the bottle, and you've seen the box, it says heavily peated and poor finish. So seeing that, already in your head, you're thinking, okay, I should be smelling smoke, I should be smelling maybe kind of a whiny characteristic, a sweetness, and so on and so on. Okay, so, when smelling flavours, think of what casks the whiskies have been matured in. So bourbon casks will give kind of vanilla notes, they'll give maybe tropical fruits, maybe. They'll give honey, they'll give chocolate. If whiskies been matured in sherry casks, you're going to get um, dried fruits. So kind of, you know, fruit cakes, dried raisins, currants, those kind of flavours. You're going to get a much more rich, kind of full-bodied, kind of sweet fruitiness. Um, so in the case of this one, I smell obviously smoke. I smell almost like a kind of a barbecue sauce thing going on. But it is, it's literally just relating it to what you remember from life. So think of foods you've eaten, think, think of ex places you've been, experiences. So if you smell a whiskey and you think, okay, this smells like you know, last weekend's barbecue, for instance. That's personal, that's perfect for, you know, your complete notes, okay? So yeah, so it's personal to you. Think of flowers, think of wines, if you're a wine drinker, think of beers. So if you're into your kind of ales, and you know you like kind of IPAs, and you think you can smell floral IPA notes, then put that down, write that down. This brings me on to a really important part, of, for me anyway, of how to taste whiskey and how to develop those tasting notes, is get a whiskey notebook, just a, a normal notebook from a stationery. And every time I have a new whiskey, okay, every time I have a new whiskey, I make notes on each individual one. So it's really rough, rough handwriting, you probably won't be able to read it. But basically, so pick one at random, so, you know, Strathmill 22 year old, for instance, okay? Um, I've put the nose, I apologise for my really 
rubbish annoying nose, palette, and finish, okay? I just write a couple of notes down. So for this one, this is tried in, the, tried in 2013. I put nose, I put a herbal sweetness to it, I put green banana, um, lots of charred wood, I put mustiness, lemon, and lots of oak, okay? That's for the nose. Uh, on the palette, I've put lots of spice vanilla, almonds, um, a salty note, fruit cake, pink lady apples, and sugared almonds, okay? And if you take notes on your whiskey, you'll soon start to develop a vocabulary to be able to describe whiskey because it's making you think and it's making you write down what you're smelling. And it's honestly, it's the this is the way I've learned to do this. Um, honestly, really, really good. And then you've got a little record of what you've tried. So I mean, this is my this is my fourth book. Okay, I'm now my fifth book, and then I've got a few more for the future. Um, so yeah, these are my future books. Because I know I'm going to be tasting whiskey throughout my life, I want a record of what I've tried. So yeah, think of foods you've tried in the past, if you're into a certain type of food, think of those foods. Um, just think of past experiences, it's all personal to you. And then obviously then the cast types, okay, as I said again. Now, what I don't do in any of my reviews, I never add water to whiskey in my reviews, just because I want my reviews to be consistent, okay? But when you're tasting whiskey in your own personal time, I would recommend adding water. Now there are a couple of ways to do this, okay? Let's just have a little test of this. Mm. It's good, dry, sweet, spicy, oh, beautiful. Right, now water and whiskey. I have been criticized on my videos in the past for not adding water, um, but it's fine, I understand why. Um, it's literally just for consistency. When I'm drinking, um, when I'm not recording the videos, I will add maybe a couple of drops of water to whiskey. And what it does, water basically just slightly reduces the alcohol and just opens up kind of locked and hidden flavors. It might reduce the sharpness, it might reduce the spice, and it just opens up different flavors and it can really change your drink. Now, I've just got a, a glass of water. Tap water's fine, unless you have particularly heavy chlorine tap water or fluoride tap water, you know, buy a cheap bottle of water from the shop, it doesn't matter. You can either use a pipette, uh, if you haven't got a pipette or can't get to the shops and buy a pipette, um, a teaspoon is fine, but I'd recommend literally just a little bit, so, you know, I've got, let's do that, I'd probably recommend that much, right? Or if you want to be even more precise, an old, bartend, an old bartending method, is to do the old straw test. So when bartenders make a cocktail, they dip the straw in, put the finger on, and they taste it. So they taste and balance of the cocktail. Now to do this, very simply, um, I have to work out a way to do this, okay? What you do, you put this in the glass, okay? You press with your fingers in, like that. So you press the top of the straw, put your thumb on the top, and that's now locked in a bubble of water, okay? And then you let go, and it drops out. So I'll show you that in action. Okay, so if I let go of my finger at the top, that's now put water into the whiskey. So that, that whiskey now has a little bit of water in. It's probably reduced the strength very slightly, so this is probably now at about you know, 48%. It's only got a little bit, little bit of water, and it has it's softened out. It has softened out. There's not as much alcohol burn on the nose. So yeah, water I would recommend. Um, you can also get a little jug. Uh, again, jugs are available online. Um, you can get whiskey branded jugs. Um, bit of fun, nice to have some whiskey paraphernalia lying about the house as well. Uh, so that's pretty much it. Sorry it's been very, very, very unrehearsed. I don't rehearse any of my videos. Um, but it's all personal guys. Um, just think of life experiences, think of plants. Think of foods, think of drinks, you know, and smell and taste everything you eat. So the next time you're drinking, say, um, you know, a fizzy drink like, you know, orange tango or whatever, um, think of that smell and think of that taste and try and lock that taste in and lock that smell in. Because next time you're smelling a whiskey, you might go, that reminds me of that orange Fanta I had a while back. It sounds silly, but 
that taste will then be locked in and then you'll have that kind of, you know, that candied, sweet, artificial orange flavour in your head and it can be used. So things like that are really, really important. I hope this has been helpful um, in some way. Um, let me know what you think. If you think I could have added anything, please let me know. Again, apologies for the new setting. I hope it's been okay, not too echoey. Um, I will be looking to get a more permanent location uh, in the near future. And I will be reviewing this fully at some point as well. Hope it's helped. Please share the video. And I will see you next week for another whiskey review with me, Joe. Cheers, guys. Bye-bye.